In the quiet town of Willow Creek, nestled between the rolling hills and the winding river, stood the old mill, a relic of the past that had long since stopped grinding grain. The townspeople often spoke of it in hushed tones, sharing whispers of the strange occurrences that took place within its weathered walls. One peculiar character that often found themselves the subject of these whispers was Edgar Thatcher. Edgar, a man of about fifty, with a wild beard that matched the gray of his eyes, had been the miller for as long as anyone could remember. His stout frame and gruff demeanor belied a gentle heart, but it was his uncanny knack for knowing when the mill was acting up that truly set him apart. It's just the old girl creaking in her sleep, Edgar would say with a chuckle, patting the dusty wooden counter of the general store as the floorboards above protested against the weight of his boots. The mill's been here for centuries, you know. She's bound to have a few quirks. But the whispers grew louder when young Billy Holloway swore he saw a figure in the mill's top window, a figure that looked like it was made of shadow and moonlight. Billy had a penchant for tall tales, so his claim was met with a mix of amusement and skepticism. That was until Old Man Jenkins, the town's most stoic resident, admitted to hearing strange noises at night. A rhythmic thumping, like the echo of a forgotten heartbeat, coming from the very same building that had stood silent for years. The townsfolk gathered in the square, their eyes fixed on the mill, as the whispers grew into a murmur. Edgar, leaning against the fence, seemed unfazed by the rising tension. He chewed on a piece of straw, his eyes twinkling with a hint of mischief. Why don't we go see for ourselves? He suggested, his voice carrying over the hushed conversations. It's been a while since I paid her a visit after dark. The group exchanged nervous glances, but curiosity won out. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the town, they gathered their flashlights and torches, ready to confront the mystery of the haunted mill. With the last vestiges of daylight retreating, the group approached the old mill with a mix of excitement and trepidation. The building loomed before them, its ancient stones seeming to absorb the dwindling light. The air grew colder, carrying the faint scent of damp earth and rotting wood, and a light mist began to coil around their ankles as they stepped into the shadow of the mill. Edgar led the way, his boots echoing off the cobblestone path as the group fell in behind him. As they grew closer, the whispers of the wind grew more pronounced, carrying with it the distant sound of rushing water from the river. The creaks and groans of the mill's wooden structure seemed to resonate with the very air around them, setting their nerves on edge. The moon, a ghostly sentinel in the sky, cast a silvery glow upon the scene, painting the mill in a ghastly light that danced and flickered with every passing cloud. The door to the mill, once a vibrant shade of red, now hung on its hinges, a dull brown and covered in cobwebs. Edgar pushed it open with a dramatic flourish, the hinges screeching like the wail of a banshee in the stillness of the night. The group followed him inside, their flashlights and torches cutting through the darkness to reveal the dusty remnants of a bygone era. The millstones lay dormant, their days of grinding grain into a fine powder long over, but the air was thick with an unmistakable sense of something alive and unseen. It began with a faint sound, a barely audible whisper that grew into a low murmur. It seemed to come from all around them, yet no one could pinpoint the source. The hairs on the backs of their necks stood on end as the murmur grew louder, swelling into a cacophony of voices that seemed to be speaking in an ancient tongue. The floorboards beneath their feet trembled in sync with the eerie chant, and the walls of the mill seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy. Shadows began to coalesce along the edges of the room, detaching themselves from the larger pockets of darkness like inky tendrils reaching out for the light. They grew in size and number, stretching and contorting into twisted, human-like forms that danced just beyond the periphery of their vision. Edgar's chuckles had long since dried up, replaced by a tight smile and a furrowed brow as he swept his flashlight beam over the floorboards, searching for any sign of movement. The air grew denser, as if the very fabric of reality was thickening around them. The once faint murmur grew into a crescendo, filling their ears and their heads with a disorienting din. The shadows grew bolder, their forms solidifying into the semblance of ghosts from the town's long-forgotten past, specters of former mill workers and townsfolk who had met with untimely ends. 
Their eyes burned with a cold, blue light that pierced the gloom, and their translucent hands beckoned the group closer to the heart of the mill. The floorboards beneath their feet grew slick with condensation, making each step feel like they were walking on a slick film of ice. The shadows grew more insistent, their whispers now clear enough to understand. Though the words were gibberish, a mix of languages lost to time. The townspeople clung to one another, their breaths coming in short, ragged gasps as the temperature in the mill plummeted. As the shadows grew more substantial, they started to interact with the physical world. Tools once neatly hung on the walls began to swing erratically, their metallic clangs echoing through the vast, open space. The millstones, long silent, groaned and shifted, as if waking from a deep slumber. Dust and debris swirled into miniature tornadoes, spinning and twisting as if alive, driven by some unseen force. The whispers grew into a deafening roar, the shadows coalescing into a tornado of spectral forms that spun faster and faster in the center of the mill. Edgar's flashlight beam trembled in his hand as he watched the scene unfold. His heart, once filled with curiosity, now pounded with a mix of fear and awe. The townsfolk huddled together, their eyes wide with terror, as the temperature continued to plummet, making their breaths visible in the icy air. Suddenly, a particularly vivid shadow, one that bore a striking resemblance to Edgar's long-deceased wife, reached out and touched his arm. The coldness of the specter's touch sent a shiver down his spine, but it was the desperate sadness in her eyes that shook him to his core. He knew that look, it was the same one she had worn in her final moments. With newfound resolve, Edgar stepped forward, his voice cutting through the din. What do you want? He demanded of the shadows. The whirlwind of ghosts paused, their whispers dying down to a murmur. The shadowy figure of his wife hovered before him, her eyes pleading. The other spirits grew still, their whispers fading away to reveal a single, clear voice that resonated in the mill's rafters. We are bound, it spoke, the words echoing with a pain that transcended time. We seek release from this endless torment. The voice grew stronger, its words weaving a chilling tale of betrayal and despair. The mill had been built on a sacred ground, a place where ancient rituals were performed to honor the spirits of the land. When the first miller had disturbed the peace, the vengeful spirits had claimed the souls of all those who worked there forcing them to toil for eternity. Edgar felt a knot in his stomach as he realized the gravity of the situation. These were not mere hallucinations or figments of their overactive imaginations. These spirits were real and trapped. He knew he had to help them find peace. His gaze swept over the frozen townspeople, and he found strength in their eyes. The group stood their ground as the shadowy tornado grew more intense. The floorboards beneath them trembled with the power of the trapped souls. Edgar's hand tightened around the handle of the flashlight, his heart racing with the beat of the spirit's anguish. He took a deep breath, trying to calm the chaos around him. We're here to help, he announced, his voice steady despite his racing heart. Tell us how to release you. The shadowy figure of his wife's ghost drifted closer, and her spectral hand touched his cheek, a ghost of the warmth it once had. The stone, she whispered. Find the stone. The group searched the mill, their lights darting over the dusty shelves and forgotten machinery, looking for any clue. The whispers grew softer, guiding them to a hidden chamber behind the massive gears. The air grew colder, and a sense of dread filled the room as they approached the chamber's heavy wooden door, adorned with ancient symbols that seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy. With a deep breath, Edgar pushed open the door and the room beyond was revealed. It was smaller than any of them had imagined, the walls lined with shelves filled with ancient tomes and artifacts. In the center, a stone pedestal held a glowing crystal, its light casting an eerie glow across the floor. The shadows grew more frantic, their whispers turning into shrieks of desperation as the light from the crystal danced across the pages of an open book. The book was bound in a thick, leather cover, the pages yellowed and brittle with age. Edgar approached it with reverence, the air around the crystal feeling charged with the weight of centuries. The words on the page were written in the same language as the whispers they had heard, but now they made sense. It was a spell, 
a plea for release from the torment that had held these souls captive. He read the incantation aloud, each word feeling heavier than the last. The crystal's light grew brighter, and the shadows began to swirl around it, their forms growing more distinct. The townspeople watched, their eyes wide, as the spirits took shape, milling around the crystal, their faces a mix of hope and fear. As Edgar reached the final word, the crystal let out a blinding flash, the light engulfing the room and washing over the spirits. The shrieks of the ghosts grew to a crescendo before dissipating into the night, leaving the mill silent once more. The crystal's glow faded, leaving only a cold, lifeless stone in its place. The group looked around, their flashlights now redundant in the moonlight that streamed through the windows. The spirits were gone, the mill's curse lifted. The town of Willow Creek had faced its fear and come out the other side, forever changed by the night's events. Edgar closed the book with trembling hands. The weight of the mill's history now laid bare before them. The townspeople looked at one another, their expressions a mix of relief and wonder. They had witnessed something beyond their understanding, something that had bound them together in a shared experience of terror and triumph. As they made their way back to the square, the cold night air felt fresher, the whispers of the river more comforting than ever. They knew the old mill would never be the same, but they also knew that the town's most infamous secret had been laid to rest. The whispers of the mill had turned into a story of redemption and bravery, one that would be told around the town's fires for generations to come. But as they left the mill behind, a single shadow flitted away from the group, unnoticed by all but Edgar. His eyes followed it to the edge of the woods, where it paused before disappearing into the night. His heart skipped a beat as he realized it was the ghost of his wife, her eyes filled with a quiet gratitude before she vanished. He knew that while the mill was free, she was not. The town returned to relative calm, the whispers of the mill forgotten amidst the bustle of everyday life. Yet, Edgar found himself drawn back to the old mill time and again, as if pulled by an invisible thread. The nights grew longer and colder, and the moon grew fuller, casting its silvery light across the town, illuminating the path to the mill with an ethereal glow. One such night, unable to sleep, he ventured back to the mill, his heart heavy with the unfinished business that haunted him. The door creaked open to reveal an empty, silent space, the ghosts of the past no longer present. But as he stepped inside, the floorboards began to whisper once more, not with fear or anger, but with a gentle guidance. They led him to a hidden corner, where a small stone was embedded in the wall, untouched by the light for centuries. The same stone that had once held the crystal's power. Edgar reached out, his trembling hand brushing away the cobwebs that clung to it. The stone felt warm to the touch, alive with the residue of ancient magic. It was clear to him now that the true curse had never been the mill itself, but the burden of unfinished business that had bound his wife's soul to this plane. With newfound determination, Edgar turned to the book that had revealed the mill's dark secret. He studied it night after night, learning the intricate details of the ancient rites that had once been performed in the very room where the crystal had been. He sought the knowledge to free his wife's spirit, to bring her the peace she so desperately sought. The townspeople watched from afar, their whispers now filled with a newfound respect for the man who had faced the mill's haunts and lived to tell the tale. They knew that Edgar was on a quest to lay his personal ghosts to rest. The nights grew colder still, and the air grew thick with the scent of rain as Edgar worked tirelessly, preparing for the final ritual. On the night of the next full moon, Edgar stood before the stone pedestal, the same one that had held the crystal that had once illuminated the chamber. Around him, he had placed candles and herbs, each one meticulously chosen for their significance in the ancient rites. He read from the book, his voice steady and clear, the incantation rolling off his tongue as if he had been born to speak it. The wind picked up outside, howling like a banshee as the storm clouds gathered, the air thick with electricity. The shadows grew restless, flickering in the candlelight as the words of the incantation grew more urgent. And then, with a suddenness that took his breath away, a soft light began to emanate from the stone growing brighter and brighter until it was almost blinding. The door to the chamber swung open, and a figure emerged from the night. 
It was his wife, but not as he had ever seen her before. She was a being of pure light, the sadness of her ghostly visage replaced by a warmth that filled the room. She looked at him, her eyes shining with love and gratitude, and then she turned to the stone. Her hand touched the warm, pulsing rock, and a surge of energy shot through the room. The light grew blinding, and the air was filled with the sound of rushing water and the distant wails of the lost souls. For a moment, Edgar felt himself torn between worlds, between life and the afterlife. And then, with a final, thunderous crack, the light disappeared, leaving only the gentle patter of rain outside and the quiet hum of the storm. Edgar looked around, his heart pounding in his chest. The stone was empty, the pedestal bare. He knew she was gone. The whispers of the mill had ceased, and the spirits of the town's past had found their peace. The old mill stood silent once more, its secrets laid bare and its haunts at rest. The town of Willow Creek had faced its fears and come out the other side, forever changed by the bravery of a man who had dared to look into the abyss and find love. The story of the haunted mill became a tale of love and sacrifice, of a man who had conquered his fear.